Hey, coach, coach, coach. How excited are you that the pads are coming on shortly? How exciting is it when the pads come on? Like when you're not here without pads, how exciting is that first day of pads that y'all look forward to? Me? Yeah, first day of pads is always an exciting day. And then after about three days, guys are ready to get out of the pads. So <laughs> and it lasts for a little bit, and then guys are tired of it. But it's, it's fun for us. I don't know how much fun it is for the players, <laughs> especially in this humidity. But it'll be, it'll be fun to see the pads go on tomorrow, to see just a little more contact, a little more physicality. You shouldn't see much change from our practices, though. Main thing, how we practice. We want to keep everybody safe, keep everybody up off of the ground. And tomorrow is now today, and the pads are going to come on. Welcome, everyone, to the locker room. Uh, Cody Stute started this off, uh, and I'm going to bring Cody in right now. The pads are on. I think I'm excited for it. It's one of my, my my most favorite days of the year. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not trying to oversell it. You 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 get excited for training camp, and then you watch it for a few days, and you're like, when are the pads going to come on? They're going to come on. There's a few things that I think deserve attention um, for sure, and some things that we'll probably be watching closer. Um, than than other things, but it, it it's a it's this is one of the one of the best days, and, and you also sprinkle in the fact that the fans are going to be there. And not only are the fans going to be there, I think these uh, these tickets uh, sold out in a matter of like minutes. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, for people to get to check this out, and, and it's it's a really really cool time. It's really really good vibes, uh, and I, I I cannot wait. We're a few hours away. Don't know why we're up this early. Well, I do because we couldn't sleep because we're so damn excited. But I'm I'm pumped for the pads. To be on, and we'll get into uh, five thoughts, five things to watch uh, about the uh, when it comes to the uh, the pads coming on. But Stu, your thought, your thoughts about the uh, the pads coming on? Well, and this group too, under D'Amico Ryan's, like the way he runs practice, it's already a pretty intense practice. You add pads in, uh, the intensity gets wrapped up and or ramped up, and you know he's being modest. Oh, we're gonna keep everybody healthy. They're gonna go out there and they're gonna thump. Okay, they're gonna there's gonna be some contact. There's going to be some popping. Um, you know, they're not going to take anybody to the ground if they can help it. But, I mean, it's it's not going to be patty cake anymore now that the pads are there. No, it's not. And, and the, the thing about it is you look at the areas, like, that the Texans are kind of set in stone when it comes to – the roster, like the wide receivers, you know, you know what's going to happen there. You know what's going to happen with the quarterback. I think you have a pretty good idea uh, with the DBs for the most part. Still have that cornerback two matchup, uh, in which Kamari Lasseter has really been running with the ones the whole time. So you have that. But in the trenches, whether it's D linemen, whether it's linebackers, whether it's interior offensive line, there's a lot of competition there, and that's where you get the intensity running back even. Um, that's where you get the intensity of the pad. So I anticipate that a lot of these guys um, who are fighting for spots, fighting for jobs, uh, they're going to be really, really, really intense. A lot of the people are going to be excited to see Diggs, Dell, Nico. You know what those guys can yeah. do, and they know they know that their roster spot is safe. But if you look at the guys where the most competition is, it's right there in the trenches. And if you look at where the most physicality takes place when the pads come on, it's right there in the trenches. So that's that that just makes for – Really good viewing today as we do watch this uh, this first padded practice. There's there's so many different players that you can be excited about, and then a bad day of padded practice, you'd be like, oh, dang it. Like <laughs> Kenyon Green comes to mind. I mean, everything about the the fitness, and he looks better, and he's he's in shape, and he's ready to compete. And if he goes out there and pads, and and every defensive lineman that he goes against just smokes him, it's like, oh, okay, like the excitement levels down. The inverse is true, too. He comes out there, he looks healthy, he's moving around, he's physical, he's pushing guys around, gets you even more excited for maybe Kenyon Green. And there's a number of those players uh, uh, that, that fall into that category. Yeah, Aziz Al-Shair, he's, uh, he's one of the new uh, new faces. Let's hear what he has to say about the uh, the pads uh, coming out. He's a favorite of D'Amico, he's a favorite of Casario. Um, this, was, uh, this was his first time at the podium uh, during training camp. In the shirt and shorts uh, for most of these practices so far, but as a linebacker, it's excitement level as you guys get a chance to put on the pads. I mean, yeah, it. I think at the end of the day, the game is playing with pads on. So, of course, you're excited, but it's, it's all over the place. You know, O-line's excited because they could have sworn they would have blocked you. D-line's excited because they swore they wasn't going to get blocked. So I think everybody, you know, there's an intensity level that comes with uh, competing and playing in the NFL. 
where, you know, it's the best of the best. So everybody thinks they're the best. Otherwise, you probably won't last long enough here. Um, so it's going to be good competition just to see how it works. I, I mean, and I, I think I think that's very, very well said. And and, and it, it, it works that way when you're watching, too, like when you're covering the squad and you're watching, too. Well, would that have been a sack? Uh, are we sure? Yeah. Like there, there's a lot of times where you're, you're always like sack. Anytime there's like a completed pass, even if the quarterback, like it looks like he evades pressure stutes this is this is stutes right here sack 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 gets to his notebook he's like sack 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 yep. what a sack who was that yeah who was that on who was that on looks up yep yep that's uh uh 97 sack <laughs> yep that's what i'm writing down in the notebook i don't i don't give the offense any benefit of the doubt there's no benefit of the doubt for the offense so uh if it, if the quarter if the defense alignment gets close I'm usually going sack. You're right about that. Uh, top five things to watch in pads. I have a list. And then I also want to get into uh, one of the moves that the Texans have made that it's getting t attention. Should it be getting as much uh, attention as it's getting? And will we get to see this guy uh, later on today when the pads do come on? It is the locker room. Number one source for Texans uh, digital content. I'm not trying to insult you, Cody. I just think I'm. Just, I just think I'm the best. I don't know. Maybe you're the best. Maybe I'm the best. Who cares? Maybe it's a tie, I guess. Shout out to Chameleonaire hey, uh, and Paul Wall. If you don't wake up and think you're the best or want to be the best, what are you even doing it for? I don't know. Maybe trying to be the second best. Who knows? Uh, but uh, let's get into the top five things to watch in pads. Be sure to subscribe, like, uh, right along, trying to get to 10,000. Not even going to lie. Not even trying to front. Trying to get to that uh, that that 10,000. Uh, and uh, appreciate everyone. We're we're creeping up on. It. I think we might get it uh, by the by the time the Hall of Fame game concludes. We might be there. Top okay. five things to watch in pads. Uh, number one, I want to see Will Anderson versus uh, Blake Fisher. Mm -hmm. uh, they've they've been kind of going at it a little bit. Will Anderson looks like at times he's getting the best of him. Blake Fisher looks like he's holding his own, which is easier said than done. But when the pads come on, you're going to get to see Blake Fisher. Laramie Tunstall's not going to practice, so we're going to get to see. Uh, what Blake Fisher is about. And I want to see how he holds up. There's going to be some bad plays. Like there's going to be like the fans are going to see Blake Fisher get his ass kicked a couple of times. Like it's, it's going to happen. He's going against the defensive rookie of the year. And he's going against one of the best uh, sack sack masters in the NFL and Daniel Hunter. So he's going to get his ass kicked. It's going to happen, but I'm intrigued to see what it looks like. Uh, how he holds up because he looks pretty damn good um, for, you know, for, for a uh, rookie. And I, I think the one thing about it is I, th he's the swing tackle. Like I don't, <laughs> there was talk like, Oh, is he going to beat out Charlie heck as the swing tackle? It's oh, early and we can figure it out. But right now I don't even think it's not even close when it comes to the reps. It, every time you look up, he's with the first team and he's playing left tackle. So it, it appears that they feel that he is the swing tackle and it'll be interesting to see how he holds up. Cause we've seen some offensive linemen look good before the pads, Go on, and then all of a sudden the pads come on, and ooh, ee, my goodness, he's moonwalking like Michael Jackson. Well, that's that's the thing is like he gets he. I mean, look, Daniel Hunter pops over there sometimes too. He gets the best opportunity, you know, to to fulfill the iron sharpens iron. I mean, it's it is a rough task for him, and he's got to take care of business or plays just fall apart. Like, and you've mentioned it, he's had some moments where. He, he's looked pretty good and he's kept things going. But I mean, if he's not taking care of his job, like Will Anderson will go in there and wreck the offense and they won't get the work in that they want. So Fisher, really tough task. Let's see if he's up to it. I mean, maybe he's a prodigy. Maybe he's just ready to go. This ain't Wake Forest, though. Eight months ago, he's blocking the Demon Deacons. Uh, now he's blocking a demon over a defensive end at Will Anderson. Oh, wow. Look at you. Good Thank Lord, you. man. So, someone likes that cheese on his omelet. That, goodness yeah, gracious. Extra, extra cheesy, please. My goodness. Cheddar or what? What are we going with? Cheddar or Swiss? Good if, Lord. If I can get the little three cheese blend, that's my, my, kind of my preference. Yeah, that's the omelet go-to, no doubt, for sure. I, I think I might, I might hit Buffalo Grill uh, here in an hour or so before practice. I might, I might have to hit that. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Uh, number two, the running backs. Um, this is a position of concern in the offseason. They tried to get Saquon Barkley. They failed. They brought in Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon coming off, uh, approaching that age where running backs kind of fall off. Uh, tell that to DJ B enemy, and uh, it kind of uh, gets Joe Mixon a little bit, not, not defensive, but just kind of uh, firm, I guess you could say. Um, 
Damian Pierce wasn't playable last year, and the Dare Gumbawale, it, it just it, it doesn't just seem like it just doesn't seem ideal that a, one of the NFL's best teams should be, you know, having Dare Gumbawale on the uh, field. Maybe we see Brooks or um, Jordan kind of emerge, and we we see like some sort of juice at that position. But I mean, right now it's it's a very very eh meh. Uh, position and look in camp and you take Joe Mixon off the field, it's just, it's kind of scary. I want to see Damian Pierce and how he looks physically. He looks fine, but. Ugh. I mean, they, the, the running backs have to showcase something as the pads come on and part of it's the offensive line's got to do their job. There were uh, a couple of run plays yesterday where there wasn't anywhere to go. Sorry. Uh, the, the, the offensive line didn't do their job and uh, things collapsed and the running backs couldn't do anything, but. Once the pads are on, they fight through some arm tackles, force those linebackers to actually square up with you. And if they're not, you know, you got a good argument to just run through those arm tackles and get those extra yards. It, this is a huge one for Pierce with no Joe Mixon right now. He's going to be the guy that gets Mixon's share of the reps. Go out there and really submit yourself as that second running back and eliminate the doubt, not necessarily of the other guys on the depth chart, but the doubt that maybe Nick Casario or D'Amico Ryans has in the back of their mind about Damian Pierce and that maybe they have to go and try to find something else or somebody else or they've got to be searching around cut down day for a running back. Go eliminate that. Start, start the quest to getting rid of that doubt with the first day of pads if you're Damian Pierce. Number three, as we go through the top five things uh, to watch in pads. So we have Anderson versus Fisher. We have the running backs. Uh, number three is the two down tight ends. And I'm not saying two downs as in first and second down. I'm talking about two down on the depth chart. Um, Dalton Schultz, we know what Dalton Schultz is. Uh, these other guys, we really don't. Uh, Andrew Beck, tight end slash fullback, he's not going to be on the field. Tegan Quitteriano, he's shown some flashes here or there, um, but he spent more time. Uh, in sweats than he has in pads. Uh, he kind of looks the part. Cade Stover, is he going to be able to contribute immediately? Can he block? Um, you know, you talk about Fisher having to block these guys. The tight ends are going to have to do it too, and th they're going to have to do it somewhat effectively. We don't expect Brevin Jordan to block. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Brevin Jordan looks like as well, how they kind of use him and how he holds up. But the the tight ends two down. Uh, I want to see what these guys look like uh, with the pads on, specifically Quinteriano. W when is the last time he even practiced in pads? Like it's when's the last time he even put on pads? It's been it's been a while for him. So we'll see uh, what what Quinteriano looks like, um, and uh, what what Cade Stover looks like, who a lot of people are excited about. I was watching yesterday, Tim Quinteriano run around, and I forgot how fast he is. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You're 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 kind of you're kind of hopping on the uh the Quinteriano no, train, aren't you? No, 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 no. I'm not hopping on the Team Quinteriano train. I just forgot how fast he is. I still don't believe he's gonna. Oh, I'm still a one man, I'm still I'm still a solo act here. I still can't get in the damn HOV lane. I'm uh, trying to get somebody to get in this Tegan Quinteriano car with me so I can get in the HOV lane because right now it's a two hundred dollar ticket if I merge to the left. I'm just asking for one person. Maybe ride shotgun or something like that. Nobody's getting on this Tegan Quinteriano train with me. I mean, the last time he practiced was in October of last year. The last game he played last year was the Carolina game, and he didn't have any really uh, many offensive snaps at all. But, I mean, he, he's really kind of the inflection point because if he plays well in training camp, then he makes the Texans think, um, a little bit longer and a little bit harder about keeping four tight ends. We know Brevin Jordan's on the team. We know Dalton Schultz is on the team. Well, Brevin covers kicks too. Uh, yes. Brevin, Brevin yes. covers kicks now. And that and Frank Ross actually brought that up and I noticed it. So that's that's the other thing about Brevin is that it's not like you have four tight ends that aren't going to be playing special teams. Brevin's covering kicks. Well, and Stover does special teams, both blocking and uh, covering kicks as well. Um, Schultz doesn't play any special teams, which is probably, you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, We're good. okay with that. It's a ten million dollar year tight end. You don't need you don't need him on special teams. Yeah, you're good. So so Quateriano, yeah. I mean, you know, I actually can remember a special teams rep um from Saturday where you know he peeled off of a block and went and you know was right there where where things were. But he's the guy that kind of forces them to think about uh, managing the roster just a tiny bit different 
than expectations if he can put something together. Haven't seen anything from like a big receiving standpoint yet from him, but I mean, there have been moments in, in practices over his time with the Texans where he showcased uh, the athleticism and the big body talent. So I, I'm interested to see him in pads. And then Stover, Stover feels like the perfect player to, to, to practice much better. Oh, uh, he seems like he's just, he's going to be as excited as anyone tomorrow. There, there was a, there was a play yesterday. He caught like a dump pass and he was going down the sideline and it was like a safety and he kind of, you know, lowered his shoulder and gave him a little thud. And then a linebacker came over and he thudded that guy. And then another DB came over and he thudded that guy and he just kind of kept running. And I was just like, you didn't need to do any of that. And it's like, now pads are on. It's like, He's not going to just be thudding guys. He's going to be trying to run people over. Yeah. You you mentioned like potential fights. That could be could be one. I think you might have been onto something there. Number four, uh, things to watch uh, as the pads come on here in a uh, couple of hours. Uh, Kamari Lasseter. Yep. He's known as a physical corner. Um, they got some wide receivers that are going to challenge him. I, I want to see what it's like when he can, you know, get – get underneath these guys. And I, I mean, maybe, maybe we see a couple of flags or something from Kamari Lasseter. Maybe we see some physicality, but uh, it's not as, it's not as easy uh, without the pads on for a DB. Cause you can't really be as physical, but I, but I anticipate him being pretty, pretty physical. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing how he holds up against uh, all these guys. The Texans always have officials out there. So, you know, he'll know if he's, you know, going over the line, toeing the line. You know, the officials talk to the guys, walking back after reps and stuff like that. I, I mean, look, this is this is part of the profile. This is part of the stuff that gets you excited about Lassiter uh, as the draft pick, the first draft pick that the Texans made this year is the physicality. And he's so physical and it's it's been it's a way for him to make up for maybe some of those speed concerns, but I haven't seen him be football slow just yet uh you know maybe the pads come on there's a step here or there but yeah getting in there getting physical uh, the texans played a lot more man coverage towards the back end of last year they may just be comfortable manning guys up a lot more from the jump this year and if lasser can do it uh showcasing it should start in day one in pads i mean he's been with the ones man like it hasn't been it hasn't really been like a hey is uh is it a kuda is it Hitchin? like he's been i mean it's it's it, been with the ones there's not been really any rotation whatsoever so yeah. i mean he's he they're giving him the opportunity and again this is something that i love about D'Amico ryan's and how he operates if it you know he said the other day about rookies we're not going to wait on you well, if they're ready to what, lead, the what are you pack, doing for us now? As was the like he said, we're not going to wait on you. What what are you bringing to the table right now? Is basically what he said. If if you can lead the pack as a rookie, he'll let you lead the pack, and 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 that's where Kamari Lasseter is in that cornerback two competition. Yeah, it, it's it's early, but it, it doesn't even seem like they've they've thought twice about putting him out there with the ones, and he and he's kind of held up nicely. I mean, I don't I know you and Pendergast had an argument about whether it would have or wouldn't have been a flag with the. Uh, with a long yeah digs down a lot of digs yeah. yeah um but yeah it's it's going to be interesting to see what Lassiter does what do you want to see in padded practice number 5 this is easy to kick off uh, yeah. i want to see kickoff team in pads uh, it really hasn't been it, it's been exciting because we've never seen the drills and what they're practicing but i, I want to see what this looks like the kickoff uh, and Pat's specifically, I don't, are they going to let Damian Pierce return kicks? Cause I, I just don't the from what I've seen, I don't really think this is made for him. Um, like many people believed, I, I don't think this is made for Damian Pierce. I actually think Desmond King is going to be the guy that's going to be really good at returning these kickoffs. And he's got a, got a decent, uh, history of it, but what does it look like? How does Fairbairn kick it? Uh, I I'm really, really excited to see that um, and, and just see kind of you heard uh, Aziz Al Shire say earlier, um, you know, would it would it have been a tackle or would yeah. you have blocked that? I, I feel like that's been the case really with like every single kickoff uh, return rep that we've watched so far. That, I, I know that there's like an initiative to sort of, you know, make it a safer play, but also get it to make it an exciting play. The way it's set up, and sometimes the running start that the returners can get, um, depending on the type of player that gets put on the field, there's high like 
run into a brick wall potential. Not that the defender's going to have a bunch of speed, but like the defender just being in the way of some of the smaller return guys that maybe the Texans might put out there. Like th- there's there's some big collisions that could happen from this. It's going to be exciting, and uh, I think your point about hey, would it have? Can it be? I mean, they go live special teams here in pads. Maybe somebody breaks one and and separates themselves in this return competition, which is far from established. I mean, it could be almost anybody at this point. Jawar Jordan, um, you know, Damian Pierce or Desmond King or um, Rob Woods. There's so many different options that they could go for and go with, and somebody maybe could separate themselves as the pads show up. And in, in the notice that we just went through five things, uh, Cody Stutes, Landry Locker uh, here uh, in the locker room getting ready. We're a couple hours away uh, from Texans' first padded practice. Uh, should be a little bit more traffic out there today, but it's going to be uh, fun nonetheless. Um, we didn't mention C.J. Stroud. We didn't mention Stephon Diggs. We didn't mention Tank Dell. We didn't mention Nico Collins. Uh, Will Anderson got mentioned. Uh, you know, you, you just you kind of feel like the the upper tier of this roster you just feel good about them like there's really not as there's not really a lot of question marks there like there's nothing there's nothing even like really concerning about the passing game i'm i'm sort of proud of the mentality that has been a quick evolution because a year ago totally different situation there weren't a lot of high priority free agents uh it was mostly based around the rookie class and we, we you know we were um you know living and dying with every cj stroud pass in in, in training camp uh, this year, the fake QB competition. Oh, the fake QB competition was disgusting. <laughs> um, and then, um, and then now this year, it's like you said, it's like, oh yeah, look, there's the new Hunter taking care of his business. It's like, let, let's look at, let's look at last year, quarterback two, or let's look at Jake Hansen, linebacker three, or maybe linebacker four. He's or, on the team or Henry To'o To'o. Um, you know, so it's, it's, you know, your, your, your eyes will, you know, if, if this will be a lot of fans first time seeing them, so you, you you'll see one and twelve and three and seven, but then every now and then your eyes will just kind of wander, and you're like, "Who's that?" You might look at your program and be like, "Oh, okay, oh, there's Kamari Lassiter. Oh, there's there's fourteen. Okay, I'm ready to see what he's got. Oh, they're lining up up on Stefan Diggs. All right, here we go. Here we go. Something that I also show up in padded practices too that I don't think we've mentioned is they do a lot more. Uh, individual one-on-ones in padded practices and a lot more seven-on-sevens in padded practice. So you do get a lot of wide receiver, uh, DB, linebacker, running backs matchups too, in addition to the team. Give me some red zone, man. Yes. Give me some damn red zone, please. Yes, please. Four days, we haven't seen any red zone. Give me some I, – I need to I need to see what this team looks like in the red zone. I want to, let's see some touchdowns. Let's see some physicality. Let's see – uh, what it looks like in the red zone because that's going to be interesting. That's going to be like we talk about who's going to eat at wide receiver and stuff. Um, they they all will have their weeks, and I, th- I think they'll all produce at a decent level. But man, let me get a let, let me get a little red zone action here to see what that looks like. Yeah, please, please. I mean, I I can already see you know Nico outside cuts inside across the back of the end zone leaping grab. Like I can already see that one. Um, you know, digs, digs, uh, you know, just, just absolutely Little crushing slant. somebody with the, with the route running. Yeah. In yeah, and t- out. T- tank, behind, out. Uh, you know, tank behind the line of scrimmage, couple of offensive linemen. No, flying you want the there. Bobby Slowick tank Dell reverse. That's what you're calling. That's your favorite play. No, no it's yeah. Not. That's what you need. You, dude, this might be the thing. This is something that I, that I have just noticed. Have you noticed this Stutes? What is it? We have not seen a single reverse this this camp. Well, I mean, wasn't the Diggs Anderson play a reverse? Uh kind of, kind of, but we have not seen Bobby Slowick, who loves the reverse. We have not seen a single reverse in camp from Bobby Slowick. That's because they've already perfected it. They practiced it so oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the it has I, I will say, and this is this goes back to something D'Amico Ryan's talked about in the early days of training camp. It doesn't feel like all of a sudden they're on, you know, uh, you know, page two hundred of the playbook. It, it still feels very much like let's get a nice base layer in here before we start getting to. Uh, there's a lot of install. There's a yeah, lot of install. Yeah, there's still 
there's still a lot of base layer that they're putting together and putting putting in. So that's we haven't seen anything too uh, crazy or funky or or, or real fun. And th- there was a couple plays. There's I think digs over the middle. Uh, where he kind of shook loose from Derek Stingley after he caught the ball it was kind of a fun play design. Cause ten- yeah, that was that was definitely a would that have happened in pad play though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like would yeah. would Stingley have just tackled him or or whatever? What'd you make of Diggs saying that uh, Stingley's one of the best DBs in the league? I'd be interested to say think I'd be interested to know if he said the same thing about former teammates in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, and and like if that's one of those. I mean, you could pick some things out from Diggs. Um, is that one of those things he says about everybody, or is that something that he actually is heaping praise on a guy? I mean, they've they have had some some fun matchups uh, in training camp so far, and it, that that's among the most fun matchups to watch is twenty four and one. Yes, I would I would agree. On top of uh, Will Anderson and Daniel Hunter versus whoever, I want to see what Titus Howard looks like too. I, I can't tell if he's having a good camp or not it's I, what, I, I can't really tell but it does feel like the right side of that O line is getting yes yesterday daniel hunter just ate his lunch all day long I yeah mean, just it, and look that's one of the best pass rushers in football fifth and it's a guy coming off an injury yeah it's a guy coming off an injury still you know probably working back a little bit uh hasn't played right tackle since he practiced it last training camp you know so there is a little knock the rust off element, but if we're a week from now still talking about, yeah, yeah, Daniel Hunter's really giving Titus Howard the work. Either Daniel Hunter's about to be really awesome, or Titus Howard's about to be really bad. Yeah, it'll be interesting to, to see what that looks like. What do you make of the Cam Akers signing? Uh, we're about to uh, about to get ready, hit the road. I might I might sleep an, another thirty minutes before I go to the. Uh, he he is here while Joe Mixon is down. That's that's my thought on him. Is that you know Cam Akers is 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 a camp body until Joe Mixon is is back. That's my thought for Akers. Yeah, that's what I think, and and I think from um, from that perspective, it's interesting. I I I don't know. Like he he's torn both Achilles. I don't know how that works. I know that maybe it's kind of like the new torn ACL, um, where once upon a time the ACL injury was like the end all be all. And now you have guys who've torn it multiple times. Uh, hell we saw this John Watson. Um, he's, he had to deal with it a little bit. Um, maybe the Achilles is a new thing. I, I, I do think though, on, on the other hand, if I'm a running back and I'm trying to make a squad, this is probably the right ish situation to, to try to make. I mean, if, if you're Cam Akers, like who, you're looking around, like I could beat out British Brooks, or I could beat out Jawar Jordan, or I could beat out Daria Gumbawale. I just need opportunities. Yeah. Well, I mean, Damian Pierce wasn't playable last year, and I know I say that a lot, but I mean, I, I think it needs to be emphasized. It's not, you know, it, it does need to be emphasized that they didn't even have confidence to to really trust him last year at the end and of the year. A little, ex, a little experience, you know, a lot of experience in, in what is kind of an offshoot Shanahan tree. I mean, he played for McVeigh and O'Connell, so you know, it's they're not super dissimilar from what the Texans run. So, you know, he's got a little, you know, experience advantage as well too. So, yeah, the running back is going to be something that, uh, man, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this again. This whole me whining about running backs all the time. Just, it just seems like it's mixing, kind of my annual thing. Mixon gets healthy, Pierce establishes himself, and then we don't have to worry about it. Okay. There you go. Okay. And where's Acres fit into that? Uh I mean it's spring league. Okay, there we go. All right, students. Uh I'm going to uh I lay down a little bit and then uh get ready to uh to roll out there. Probably probably can go to Buffalo Grill, I'll be honest with you. Get give you an omelet. omelet before. Extra cheesy, baby. Yeah, give order, me a little omelet. Yeah. Order Cody Stoot style, extra cheesy. Yeah, Cody Stoot's extra <laughs> cheesy. What was it you said about Will Anderson? He's uh uh, uh, eight months ago, Blake Fisher was blocking Demon Deacons. Now he's got to block a demon off of the defensive end spot. Oh my God. All right, get the hell out of here later. See ya. That's uh, Cody Stutes, uh, the great Cody Stutes of uh, Houston football. I'm Landry Locker uh, of uh, the Locker Room. We're a few hours away uh, from the uh, first padded practice. I'm pumped. Uh, There's going to be a nice crowd. There's going to be a lot to uh, get into. Uh, Post-practice reaction, the live stream. Um, We were a couple hundred plus deep yesterday. Uh, I anticipated being a little bit uh, 
even more crowded today. We're going to try to do that at 1.30 since there's going to be more traffic uh, and probably a little longer practice. So join me for that. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like, ride along. We're chasing down 10,000 no matter what happens when it comes to this Texan stuff. We're all in it together. Thanks for coming through. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room. Yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk. Yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle is what we really do. We the source. We the post.